November is a monstrous month for games, but which titles will win, surprise, and flop? I'm Go Strobo, and let's find out. Today we're talking all about the month of November, that massive holiday event when all the game publishers ship all their stuff straight to store shelves. With Black Friday on the horizon and Christmas just around the corner, they gotta get their best wares in gamers' hands. And I've looked through all the releases, there are just an ungodly amount of them, so many it would take an entire video just to read the list. Instead, I've found the top 10 based on my judgment, the biggest ones, and I want to go through and find some that are going to be surprises and pick one true gem, some that are going to disappoint and pick one sad flop, and which game will be the winner of the month do I predict to be the best of this rush month. So in chronological order, or almost chronological order, we've got Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, Assassin's Creed Unity slash Rogue, since one is last gen, one is current gen, I kind of am grouping them together, even though they're two totally different games, and I think will have two totally different levels of impact. Uh, Lego Batman 3, The Master Chief Collection, Dragon Age Inquisition, Grand Theft Auto 5, next gen version, Little Big Planet 3, Far Cry 4, Super Smash Bros. for Wii U, and then the Warlords of Draenor expansion for WoW. So looking down this list, we'll start with those diamonds in the rough. Games that I think are going to exceed expectations and sort of rise to the occasion. And two stand out to me um, out of these ten, and for very different reasons, they kind of have been lowered down a few levels lately. That's Call of Duty Advanced Warfare and Dragon Age Inquisition. Now, Advanced Warfare... It suffers from Ghost, right? That definitely did damage the brand. It came out as a next-gen Call of Duty, quote-unquote, and really wasn't, and in fact was a step back in many ways, and people sort of really soured on the COD name, and pre-orders are way down, and there's plenty of talk of, like, how long can this franchise survive? And in general, shooters just haven't been so successful this year. Destiny received a lot of hate, although it's getting so many hours of playtime and so many sales, I'm sure, that ultimately... They're not too sad about those review scores. And then Titanfall kind of dropped off the face of the earth after a few months, save for the hardcore fans. Advanced Warfare is in an interesting spot because people are kind of, I think, not... There's not like this mega marketing, just everybody is hyped for Call of Duty. Some people are like, eh, I want to check it out. I want to see what the multiplayer is like. I wonder if it will bring glory back to the COD franchise, and I really think it will. I've talked to some people that have played the game, um, pro players and people who are not pro players, and everybody has enjoyed it thoroughly and said, hey, this is where we want Call of Duty to be. It's going in the right direction. It feels much more next-gen, truly an Xbox One, PS4 experience, um, and they're doing things to sort of advance the gameplay with more of the movement, the verticality, and really bringing Call of Duty sort of a level up as opposed to just another game in the franchise and they're doing things differently and something I always say is like how would they go back after this if they add all this future tech are people going to really want to revert back to non you know future tech no jumping no boosting no dashing and shields but the that doesn't matter because what we're talking about is what they have on the plate for this year, and I think people are going to eat it up. I think that having Kevin Spacey in the story, hopefully that comes together nicely. Um, they're very current with sort of their uh, exosuits and all that is very popular, and the multiplayer looks to be like sort of a return to glory. They've had three years to develop this game, Sledgehammer, is made up of a pretty good group of people, and so hopefully they can deliver a knock-out-of-the-park experience, and I am personally super excited for it. I think Call of Duty Advanced Warfare is going to really be that game that gets the franchise back on track and then next year when Treyarch delivers sort of their uh you know wave two next gen experience because this is still kind of the first year the first attempt for most studios on the new hardware next fall next holiday is when I think you're going to start getting like the real masterpiece titles but Advanced Warfare I think man I think that one people are sleeping on it and I I know why and I get it but I think you're going to be very pleasantly surprised Dragon Age Inquisition um I, I've just, it's 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 sort of a tale of two sides for me. One, the game has not been getting a lot of press or hype, and is that because they're not pushing it, or is that because it's not so good? And then also I feel like the systems in place are a little bit behind the times. Like, is that sort of stop and pick your attacks? Is that what people really want? Or are they expecting something more flashy and fast pace out of a next-gen $60 holiday experience. Not to say that it won't be worth it. I think it definitely will be, and I think it will uh, sort of rise back into, you know, hey, Dragon Age is a really 
top tier title, um, but it sort of also makes you question Bioware in general. Where are they heading as a studio? We expected to see something from a new Mass Effect this E3, and all we really got was some concept sketches and some promises of future games that are, you know, off in the distance, but we didn't really see any substance. And they, at one point, with Mass Effect 2, like, I felt like they were one of the premier studios in gaming, and I feel like they've lost a lot of that luster, you know, Mass Effect sort of took a strange dip after 3, sort of the ending controversy. Dragon Age now doesn't seem to hold as much hype, and it's just like, what is that studio going to be for this generation? They clearly were one of the more defining uh, gaming places of the last generation, and so it's sort of like, what can they do now? You know, SWOTOR um, was not really the biggest thing that people wanted it to be there's still people playing you know old republic online but it's not it definitely didn't live up to what you know people thought it, it could have been or were hoping it would be and they've got this other game called shadow realms coming out next year and it, apparently mass effect and a frostbite 3 star wars game in development and it's like okay so hopefully they'll get back on track and dragon age is a real sort of line of demarcation like is bioware going to put themselves back in that top tier or are they going to sort of falter and fall off a little. I hope that DAI can come through and be sort of the best in that series. I would love for it to do well. I just don't also know if that kind of styling, you know, the medieval dragons and, and like, are we done with that? Are we sick of that by now? Is that like Bloodborne, for example, seems so much more exciting going the gothic route than the Dark Souls 1 and 2 medieval route. If Bloodborne had been just a copy of that sort of place in time, I feel like it would be a lot less exciting. So sometimes you need to really switch up your scenery and change up your your stuff and Dragon Age Inquisition like 2 had a lot of problems with its areas and repeated caves and caverns and like how boring that got visually and just it became a, a, a drag. So I hope that this one can live up. I would say the surprise that was going to be Advanced Warfare just because everybody I talked to is not very excited except the people that have played it and that's what gives me supreme confidence that this is going to be the gem of the month it's sort of not like uh like oh my god this game came out of nowhere um but i do think it's going to be the one that impresses people the most based on their expectations um if i look down the list as well um see nothing really to me stands out like it could be a huge surprise out of these top 10 maybe there'll be some indie game that you know elevates itself but i think advanced warfare is going to be the multiplayer game of the holiday season, and that's going to be uh, pretty awesome. If we look to sort of the duds, the games that I think might disappoint, that might fall off a little bit, um, you know, there's there's stuff. I don't really like the expectations for Little Big Planet Three. I don't think are that high, so that game not being revolutionary doesn't really do anything to it. So, I mean, GTA Five is the same game. Master Chief Collection, we know what that is, and the Halo Five beta um, really kind of elevates that one in my books a lot because it gives you a chance to experience something that is very future based and is off in the distance and is a you know juggernaut of a game that everybody wants um so looking here like i think there's the potential for far cry 4 to be a little bit of a letdown um i've played a bunch of it and i enjoy it don't get me wrong i think it's a recommendable 60 dollar game but in comparison to unity it definitely feels like sort of the little brother like the way I would describe it, based on what I've seen, I haven't played, you know, Unity, I have not played the full Far Cry 4, this could be just my early impressions, but Unity is sort of where all the efforts went to make this a fully next-gen experience, and it definitely is, it's only on next-gen, Far Cry 4 is a cross-gen title, um, and seems to be stuck more in that redressing of a past game, it is Far Cry 3 with a new suit, and that is a fun base game, and the foundation is strong, and there's tons to do, and I think it is incorporating some nifty ideas with sort of the multiple locations up very, very high in the, the snowy Himalayas, off in the trippy world of Shangri-La, and sort of the main mountainous foresty landscape. So I, I think it's going to be a good game, but it may not be as great as sort of the imprint that Far Cry 3 had. And the other one uh, that I look at on this list, I mean... <sighs> I'm going to stick along the Ubisoft line and, and say that Rogue could really be like a, a what are they doing game. Like, this is just such a cash in. Um, and, I mean, I know GTA 5 and, like I said, Master Chief are the same game, so I don't know that you can really describe them as letdowns, even though personally for me, I'm not so excited for them. I wonder how Smash Bros. does. You know, I think Smash Bros. is a great game. I am personally, like, just 
so like I'm drooling to get that game. I want to play it couch multiplayer with my friends and family. I want to just just get all the characters. Hopefully there's new stuff. We're getting info soon on that. Will there be some exclusive characters or DLC characters or, or what's going on? Um, but does it have the same impact that it used to have? You know, they put the 3DS version out first and then uh, we're sort of in this awkward space where everyone knows about it, right? And it's like, are we going to just eat it up or are we going to be more like oh smash bros it comes out at that like perfect time november 21st right before black friday thanksgiving christmas rush i think everyone that owns a wii u will buy it but the real question is how many people that don't own a wii u will pick up a console plus game and how many people who bought it on 3ds are going to grab it once again to play locally for the holiday season i think there's a high probability that it does sort of do that but it definitely is like a mark of like, huh, I wonder how this is going to go. I slightly worry about Assassin's Creed Unity because it has so much hype. And that's the only reason I would put it in this category. I think that game is going to be quality. And in fact, in a second, I'll talk about why I think it could win Game of the Month. But there's so much sort of everyone wants this to be the second coming of Assassin's Creed, the saving grace for a series that is sort of devolved into same-ishness and, and repetition. Does it have enough to, to do that? Does it have enough to be another Assassin's Creed 2? Or will it feel like just a little step up? But if I had to give one, um, sadly, I think it's Far Cry 4. And I will still enjoy that game, but I think it, it might be like, wow, does this really need to be an annualized franchise? And, and maybe it does just for its pure fun in terms of like, hey, it's a really cool game to mess around in. I can see that. But I was looking forward to maybe be one of my top five games of the year, and I don't know that it's going to crack that mold. So there's not really like a true like dud of the month, but there's definitely some titles I think. What's interesting about this year is there's plenty of games that got delayed that would have been sort of the tentpole releases for these consoles. So if we think about it, you know, Halo 5 coming out this year would have been Microsoft's main push for Xbox One. Uncharted 4 coming out, um, or even The Order, even Bloodborne, uh, would have been Sony's main push. Instead, they're left with Little Big Planet 3 as their exclusive Microsoft has Sunset Overdrive in October, so we can't really count it here. I think that game is really great, uh, by the way. But Nintendo, like Zelda, you're seeing a lot of things, like even games like The Witcher 3 that would have featured prominently here. Uh, Batman, like games that just got pushed out. And so now we're looking at what I would almost consider like the next, like like a, a rung down of games to sort of step up and which ones are going to really fill that hole. So things like Dragon Age Inquisition, Far Cry 4, um, Little Big Planet 3, even the Master Chief Collection have a lot more pressure on them to do really well and to be big releases when previously they would have been um, sort of the second in command. They would have been playing sidekick instead of superhero. Um, let's talk though best game of the month. That's the most exciting part and that's what I am obviously uh, most hyped for and hopefully you are as well. Advanced Warfare, Unity, Batman 3, Master Chief, Dragon Age, GTA, Little Big Planet, Far Cry, Smash Bros, Warlords. I don't really have much experience with WoW, so I'm going to knock that right off the list. Um, Lego Batman 3, I think, will be a great game, but it's it's not really appealing to my demographic or probably yours that much. GTA 5 is sort of a redo. I think Master Chief Collection has a chance to be that for a lot of people. There's so much content there. You're getting the Halo 5 beta access, uh, which isn't until the end of December, but still. And then, you know, just like... The fact that they have a half an hour of blur cutscenes for Halo 2, the fact that you've got, you know, all this content, all this multiplayer. I'm going to be interested to see if, if you know, it is sort of a retread, right? And it's probably the most massive remake of the year. You know, Last of Us, but that's so recent. This one is a much bigger undertaking. Um, and, and how does that, like, sort of, do people enjoy Halo 1, 2, 3, four even as much as they think they did or, or where does that leave it um i think advanced warfare if the single player is strong could be the game of the month i i am very very sure that the multiplayer is going to deliver the single player is always sort of suspect they look to be doing some cool things but i i worry like hey is that exosuit available at all times in single player or are there just set missions like climb this wall because that gets very gamey and very sort of uh you know, quick time event based and, and sort of bleh. Smash Bros. I think could do it if there is enough cool content that isn't in the 3DS version. They've talked about a board game mode. They've talked about Master and Crazy and challenges. DLC characters would really give that a, a big boost as well. But to be honest with you guys, I'm looking at Assassin's Creed Unity to win the month and wreck the competition. This is a game that 
has a huge fan base and a huge amount of hype behind it. Look at the sales figures, even for the quote off your games of like Brotherhood and Revelations and and Black Flag, and they're massive. So you know this one is gonna just go crazy, and it's a game that a lot of people I think will buy a next gen console for. I'm a little bit confused by the fact that they're releasing Rogue on the same day. I think it would have been so much smarter to put out Unity and then Rogue like a month later. Because if you put out Unity first, people want to buy a console because they need their Assassin's Creed fix. Now, I think some people won't know really the differences as much, like just like the general Walmart shopper. And they might just pick up Rogue thinking, oh, this is the, the game for Assassin's Creed for my console and I don't need a next-gen one. So ultimately, you know, Ubisoft isn't concerned with next-gen sales, although they should be because for the industry to push forward, they need to pump those consoles into people's houses. So releasing them simultaneously, Unity was delayed to be with Rogue, which is so weird. I just, I find it very, a strange strategic decision. They have their reasons, I'm sure. It just seems senseless to me. And we've seen plenty of senseless weird things happen before. So don't be surprised if that bites them in the butt. But back to the actual game, like the increased verticality, the fact that you're going to really notice this is a enhanced experience that's only possible based on the power of the new boxes. Like that is critical. The fact that they have eliminated some of the clunkiness and the rote nature of the free running. Now you can approach walls at any angle. You can fast ascend, fast descend. It's a lot crisper and smoother of a sprint system around the city. It's back to a very beautiful and big and sort of historic land um, that people will recognize. And I think they can do much more sort of with those landmarks to make you feel like, ah, whereas sure people know us history from AC three, but it was like, most of those structures were really boring to look at. Or Black Flag, like, there wasn't really a city to marvel, you know, and just stand there and, like, pull out your camera and, like, take an Instagram photo of. I think this will deliver that being set in France. Um, I think they have an excellent backdrop for the story. I think the main character, Arno, is a little boring, but I'm hoping that he can come around and be a likable hero since they've struggled with sort of not likable heroes lately. Even in Watch Dogs, you know, Aiden Pierce. He's kind of a jerk. So a cool guy would be a great grab for them. The multiplayer seems like it will be fun. Drop in co-op in certain missions could be sweet. Adding some stealth elements with a dedicated crouch button, like big kudos, everything I could have wanted them to add mechanically, it seems like they have. And now it's just about how does the game come together? Is the storytelling on point? And really my biggest question mark is how does the modern day stuff integrate? Desmond's story is done. What they did in Black Flag was very interesting and clever. I didn't think it was like the best thing ever, but it was interesting, like, oh, you're in the studio, they're making the game. It's time for them, though, to really evolve that for the next three, four years. Like, what's the setup going to be going forward for AC? I feel like with Unity, they need to define sort of that dynamic between the present day and the Animus past and set up sort of a storyline going forward. And they've revealed basically nothing as far as I know about it. I'm excited to see where they go with that. I loved in Assassin's Creed 2 when you solve those little fun brain teaser puzzles and you uncover the glyphs and like piece together that video. I hope there's some mysterious elements here and it's not just about collectibles for the sake of collectibles, but that there is some sort of uh, allure behind it that makes you want to really explore the entirety of the map. The combat seems to be getting a lot more um, intense in terms of your ability to modify your tactics, um, you can now have, you know, there's lots of different armors and different fighting styles you can sort of go between and things like that should make that interesting. Assassinations are another thing I'm curious how they handle because early on they felt so meaningful. It was like this magical chase or, or quick, like, you know, stealthy, snaky conquest of an area and then you dominate the surroundings and dictate when you were going to attack your foe. I feel like lately assassinations, and a lot of this has to do with no verticality and not many options to really get at your guy or, or look really awesome but they've they've sort of fallen flat and maybe it's because we've done so many over the last seven games or whatever but can they add importance back to assassinations and make each one feel like a critical kill and a huge plot point as well and then you know where do they go with that storyline to wrap you in i love the roman tale back in two and how that sort of pieced together with the pope and all that stuff and then ultimately the the apple and it, it was just really great and so my biggest finger crossing just moment is AC Unity deliver and be the game of the year and thereby the game of November. I think it has the extreme potential to do it. I think it also has the potential to be more of the same. Right now I put it at about 75-25. I'm 75% confident it's going to be my game of the month, uh, which is pretty good odds going in considering I played none of it. I've seen people play it in person. It's gorgeous and I think it's going to be 
awesome. That is where I stand on these titles. Let me know about yourself. What game do you think will win November? Which one are you most looking forward to? Is there a game you're worried about? Give me some short responses, long responses, whatever you feel like talking to me in the comments below. I'll be looking at them, responding, and uh, maybe even using them in a future video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having a fantastic day and enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a thumbs up. It helps out more than you know. So we've got Advanced Warfare and Dragon Age Surprising. We've got Far Cry 4, maybe falling a little bit behind, as well as Assassin's Creed Rogue being uh, just showing us that the PS4 and the Xbox One is where it's at. It's amazing if you go back and look at the graphics or even the gameplay, and you're like, wow. Even though it doesn't seem like it, even though there's not a true standout like 10 out of 10 yet, Next Gen really is pushing things forward, and that's pretty promising. And I hope that Unity is the one that really cements that. And like people were expecting Watch Dogs to be the, the Next Gen you know, behemoth last year and it got delayed and it became a mess and it wasn't that great. AC Unity has a chance to be the Ubisoft game and just the game in general that does that for us. So we will wait and see only a couple short weeks away. Until the time, the guys and girls, thanks again. Drink so much chocolate. Enjoy yourselves and enjoy the holiday season. Till next time, we'll see you all later.